Hi my friends, today we are going to make a natural border bowl without doing the rough turning. Hi my friends, how are you? I hope everybody is fine. My name is Daniel Villarino. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, a few weeks ago uh, there was a big uh, snowstorm. Uh, yesterday it snowed again and you can see the white through the window. And as a consequence of that, uh, several trees and branches uh, fell down. Uh, one of the trees that suffers a lot with this type of uh, climate is the Bradford pear. And one of the neighbors uh, had one in which two big branches fell apart. And uh, I went over there with a chainsaw to help him clear up because one of them fell over the street and uh, he was uh, so kind to give me some pieces of the tree and one of them is this beautiful uh, crotch that i am going to use to make a natural edge uh, bowl and as you can see it has a main trunk and two uh, branches that separate from there uh, this type of structure in the tree typically has a very beautiful grain where the two branches separate. It looks like a flame many times. So this uh, Bradford pear natural edge ball is today's project. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to work. With a compass, I look for an approximate center. Since it is a crotch branch, I want to find a center that will allow me to take advantage of the three ends. With a marker, I trace an approximate circumference and I see it will work well. I will initiate the turning between centers, but I do not have a good holding for the live center, so I will need to clean some of the bark. You can see that I have secured and fixed the piece the best I could to the drill press table. I will use a Forstner bit to clear up some bark until I reach firm wood. While I am doing the perforation, you can see the piece is not moving anywhere. And every so often I lift the bit to check if I have reached solid wood. I am going to get the live center closer and take advantage of the small divot left by the Forstner bit in the center to place the point in that divot. Then I will rotate the tailstock wheel to push the piece against the spur center. While I do this, on the headstock side, I try to form with the three branches a plane that is perpendicular to the rotation axis, since eventually on that side will be the rim of the ball. As you can see, the piece is quite unbalanced. So I will start turning really slow and increase slowly the speed trying to avoid vibration. As soon as the piece gained speed, the end grain began to splash water, which demonstrates how green was this blank. I will start turning at about 340 RPMs. I will start the turning with push cuts. I do not let the gauge tip to overhand too much beyond the tool rest, because the piece is exerting a lot of leverage at this point. Here you can see the push cut from a different perspective. You can see that I am taking my time with the cut, since I am turning a lot of air and little wood, which you can hear in the intermittent noise made by the cut. In these cases, it is better to be patient and not to force the cut. At this stage, I am not too worried about shaping the piece. Rather, I want to remove material in steps, trying to balance the piece a little more. The more balanced the piece becomes, the more I will be able to increase the turning speed, and that will make the turning easier. I will work a little in the ends of the branches to eliminate the excess wood. This will help in improving the piece balance.
very often I will reaccommodate the tool rest so that it will always be close to the wood and also before starting the lathe I will check no part of the piece touches the tool rest. When we start the cut, the sound is more continuous, but as we get farther and farther from the center, we are turning more air and the sound becomes more interrupted. We have to keep the tool well supported on the tool rest to avoid it from jumping. As you will see, although I was able to cut one of the branches all the way across, it needs maybe one or two more passes to do the same with the other two branches. As you can see in this take on real time, I am taking my time to do the cut. The yellow arrow shows the step left by the cat, an indication of its death. If the cat becomes too deep, it may be difficult to remove so much material. In that case, one can retract the gouge a little bit and form a new step not as deep as the previous. Then we can come back to the first step and finish the initial cut. In a previous video I demonstrated how to balance the initial blank between centers to be able to turn at a higher speed from the beginning, which is better and recommended. In the upper right corner of the screen you will see the link to that video. In this case, on purpose, I did not do that procedure. The reason is that, in this particular piece, I wanted to take advantage to the fullest of the flame grain that shows where the crotch opens and also that the bowl shows a more proportional distribution from the center to the end of each branch, since on one side there are two branches and on the opposing side just one. If I have tried to balance the bowl, the rotation center would have been located towards the heavier side that means closer to the two branches and visually on the other side where there is just one branch we would have had a lengthy protrusion for that i initially decided to start with a not so balanced position and cope with a lower speed turning this will provide a more even pole shape i take in the compass the measure of the tenon i will do in the bowl's base Once again, on the top right corner of the video, I will put a reference to a video that shows how to correctly make a xenon. The touching point of the divider is the one in the left. The one in the right, although close, is used only as a reference and never touches the wood. Now that the bowl is a bit more balanced, I will increase a little the speed. With a couple of gauge passes at the base, I leave the wood needed to form the tenon. I use a skewed chisel to shape the lateral wall of the tenon in a dovetail shape that will match the jaws of the chuck.
with the tenon defined, I can now turn my attention to the final shaping of the external part of the bowl. I am doing delicate pull cuts to even up the surface and eliminate tool marks. You can see that these are low intensity and soft cuts in the fine shavings that are being produced. I use the gouges Irish profile wing as a scraper and I keep the tool handle pointing down to perform a sheer scraping cut. I am removing the spur center and I will put in its place the chuck so that I can hold securely the piece using the tenon in the base. I am starting the hollowing of the bowl, but in this particular case I am going to perform an additional step. I want to form a temporary tenon so I will be able to turn it around. The reason is that I want to insert my logo coin in the base. This temporary tenon will allow me to securely hold the bowl, make the perforation in the base to place my logo coin and then turn it around once more to complete the interior of the bowl. In the case of a typical bowl with a circular rim, this step is not needed because at the end of working the inside, one can turn the bowl around and since the rim forms a circumference, you can hold it with a longboard chuck or with a cold jaws. But in the case of a natural edge bowl with an irregular rim, that is not possible. So it is worth it to do it uh, this additional step for the base perforation. On the tailstock I put a Jacobs chuck and hold in it a 1 inch and a half Forstner bit to make the perforation for my logo coin. Now that I have the perforation, I can go back to hold the ball by its base to finish the hollowing of the internal side. There is an area in the border where the bark became loose. So, before I keep working in thinning the ball walls, I will cut a piece of bark close to the place where the detachment took place, so later I will use it to make a repair, applying with glue a sort of patch. In the caliper I will keep the wall thickness that I want. Please note that while I can, I will keep the live center press against the middle. Also, that since the ball is a bit more balanced, 
I am able to increase the speed of rotation. As I have shown in other videos of natural edge ball turning, I will work by sector starting at the rim and working my way to the center. The turning of this piece presented several challenges. The wood had so much humidity that as I was working on it, it was drying, producing movement of the fibers. This would make uneven cuts and leave tool marks that will require more sanding at the end. Also, regarding the sanding, since the wood was still green, the sandpaper would clog more easily and it will be necessary to change it more often. I verify often the wall thickness. As I get closer to the wall thickness, I do lighter cuts and with a freshly sharpened tool. I am almost at the wall thickness I want, so this cut is really light. And once I verify that I have the wall thickness and that it is even, I will move to the next sector and I will not touch the sector I just worked on. Since the wall is really thin, it will dry very fast and it will look its roundness. So if I were to go back there with the tool, it will cause very nasty tool marks. I begin to work in a new sector. Compared to the previous, this one should be easier because I am turning less air. As we advance in thinning the wall, the parts closer to the rim be begin to vibrate a little because the material is thin there. However, the advantage of working by sectors is that the central phone still keeps mass and thickness and that provides stability to the thin sector closer to that area, the one in which we are working. For that reason, once a sector is completed and we pass to the next one, it is not convenient to go back and work in more external sectors. Since the process is repeated, I will speed up a bit to show the remainder of the internal turning. I will keep working by sectors and moving the tool rest often so I can keep the cutting edge of the gouge well supported. Before doing the final passes for each sector, I make sure to refresh the gouge's sharp edge. With the stray support, I am having some difficulty to get as close as I want to the wood. So I will replace it and put in its place a robust J-tool rest with a curve at the end. That will allow me to support the gouge well and keep it stable.
Making this cut towards the center, I realized that it was leaving a small knob there. This was because the tool rest was a bit high. I adjusted it and the following cuts finish with the cutting edge just in the center and without the knob. This demonstrates how important it is to have the tool rest at the appropriate height. Sometimes to achieve this requires a little bit of trial and error. The secret of a once turned bowl without rough turning when the wood is really green and with high humidity is to turn the walls thin. It is unavoidable that the circular shape will change because when the drying happens the wood fibers will accommodate and that will produce wood movement. But when the walls are thin the fibers have more flexibility and that will diminish the possibility of cracks. The once turned ball technique lends itself greatly to produce natural edge balls because in this kind of balls one cannot observe that easily the good movement because the rim is not a perfect circumference as in the case of the regular balls. You can also do a regular ball with circular rim by this method if you do not mind that the nature will do its work and add certain additional beauty and character to the craftsman's work. the base I will use a heavy duty scraper freshly sharpened. Please observe that the cutting point is located at the bowl's center. Because it's fresh sharp edge, this scraper produces shavings similar to those of a cutting tool like a gouge. I have left a few hours go by before sanding so that the superficial humidity will evaporate and the sandpaper will not clog that much. As always I will sand through the grids going from coarser to finer and finer grids. A trick I use to make sure that I sanded every single square inch of the surface is to use a pencil to cover all of it. This way when all the pencil marks are gone I know I sanded everything. The last sanding stage I will do with 600 grit sandpaper and I will do it manually. I will use buffing wheels to finish the bowl. I load the first wheel with Tripoli bar. These wheels are turning at 3000 RPMs, so I had to hold the ball very firmly to avoid the wheel catching the ball and rip it out of my hands. As you can see, the Tripoli makes an excellent job polishing the surface. Since the surface looks so good, I will skip the white diamond stage and go directly to buffing with Karnawa wax. For the internal side of the bowl, the wheels can be dangerous, so I change to this semi-spherical buff that works really well in the concave curvature of the internal side. After using the Kanawa wax buff, I use a cotton cloth to do a final buffing by hand. As you can see, with this system you achieve a very nice finish.
I decided to use a dark brown acrylic paint to make a design in the base of the bowl. The final touch I glue in the recess the coin with my logo. And here you can see some pictures of the bowl, including the detail of the flame design of the grain where the two branches of the crotch separate. Ok my friends, there you have it, beautiful wood, this natural edge ball without doing the rough turning or pre-turning, just uh, a one turn ball. And this type of uh, pieces, the crotch pieces uh, from the tree, because of the irregular shape they have, they are uh, well suited to, to do this type of walls because if for any reason the wood changes shape, you, you don't notice it that much. So it's a very nice wood. You can see there uh, some details on the on the grain as well as the flame pattern that appears here where the crotch divides and on the back I had to do some something on the base because what happened is when I was uh, polishing it I realized that the Tripoli was getting into the pores in the in the base for some reason it was not uh, very uh, soft and that it began to look like dirty so I decided to use a pen and give some texture is uh, acrylic paint and you can see there uh, the detail with the coin as well so i am really happy with the result i hope you enjoyed the video if that's the case don't forget to mark the like button below my comments and if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel please do so there will appear the button to facilitate the subscription and it will be until the next one cheers